what we are doing in today's presentation, I will talk about the liability tools we developed in at the University of Akron. And in today's presentation, there will be four parts. In the introduction section, I will talk about the problem we have in the reliability based design. That will talk about the various sources of uncertainty. And then in the second part, I will talk about the research effort, the research method. And in the third part, I will present the reliability tools we develop. And then we will conclude the presentation and make some conclusion and recommendation for future research. Why do we need default, why do we need the reliability based design? Well there's a various source of uncertainty in the design process and we need to accommodate all these uncertainties in the design. And that's the reason why we should use a reliability based design. And LRD is a simplified format of the reliability based design. Okay, let's take a look at the various source of uncertainty in the design process. We have uncertainty coming from the soil property, construction material, loads, model error, design criterion, and construction. And today I will talk about the first four categories of the uncertainty. The construction uncertainty is difficult to quantify, so we, we won't talk about in this today. So, For external load, the load are uncertain. It's very clear that depending on whether it's live load or dead load, the COE is different. We have model errors. When you analyze the pies subjected to a new double curve to monitor to model the soil behavior, but those curves are empirical equations. They have model they have model uncertainty. And we also model the pile. In the we model the, the pile behavior and basically we have assumption on the on how the concrete behaves and how the steel behaves. Design criterion. In the design process we specify the allowable displacement, but the problem is that the foundations may not fail even when the actual displacement is greater than the allowable displacement. As a result, the allowable displacement has some uncertainty itself. Now how can we how can we accommodate for the uncertainties in the design process? And first we have ASD and now we are using LRFD. As a deterministic method, ASD requires that Okay, here's the equation for ASD. Um, the resistance, the nominal resistance divided by a factor of safety should be greater than the nominal low effect. The good thing is that it's easy to implement LRD, uh, implement ASD and it is conceptually simple. And now we are using LRD as a semi-probability method. And this is a generic equation in LRFD. The summation of the factor resistance to this that it can we consider the uncertainty of the low effect and the resistance and it has a consistent format as ASD so people a smooth transition ASD to LRFD. Let's take a look at some of the resistance factors taken from the ESTO LRFD bridge design specification. And this one is taken from a 
so here we have the we have the limit we have different limit states we have um, strength limit state and serviceability limit state and depending on the equation the design method you use you apply different resistance factor and here's a, another table for the resistance factor but and the one thing we would like to look at is this for the service speed limit check the resistance factor is taken as one <coughs> in other words the low factor is also taken as one in other words the uncertainty arising in the low soil property desired criterion and other sources of uncertainty are not taken for are not considered in the serviceability limit check so the, when you use the resistance factor there's some disadvantage the problem is that when you calibrate the resistance factor the, the assumptions in the calibration process are almost unknown people cannot make any adjustment on the resistance factor they have to accept all these assumptions and they only the, the code only give you the specific a few resistance factor that only applicable to a few predefined reliability index for other reliability index you need to recalibrate the resistance factor they are no longer applicable and as we in we see in the previous table the resistance factor in the serviceability limit track is taken as one no uncertainty is considered <coughs> it's a deterministic method as ASD and there's one more the system reliability is not considered in the current practice of LRD and we will discuss about the system reliability in detail later on and here I would like to talk more about the implementation issue in the LRD that that issue is very obvious let's take a look at the example of exoloaded pile and we have a we have a pile that is subject to actual load it penetrates through three different layers <coughs> and is look at this this equation is used to calculate the ultimate capacity and LRD LRD requires that the summation of the factor resistance to be greater than or equal to the summation of factor load but the problem is that in practice for the pile may penetrate through different soil certification and for the thing is of each soil certification would be different and the soil properties would be different too <coughs> as a result the probability distribution of the spot the ultimate capacity may differ same here for letter load pile the same resistance factor regardless of the soil certification as a result we won't achieve a consistent level of safety the purpose of implementing LRD is to achieve a uniform level of safety but here because of the way we implement the LRD factors we cannot achieve the safety factor we cannot achieve a uniform level of safety and this is a conclusion was pointed out in a recent paper here now the problem is that how can we address the issue how can we accommodate the uncertainties in the foundation design and what we are doing at the universal equine is is that instead of trying to calibrate the resistance factor we develop some computer-based program the computer-based program is used to calculate the reliability index or failure probability in reliability based design there's two basic questions first of all we have to define what is the failure event in other words you have to define you have to specify the design criterion and second you need to know how to calculate the failure probability that is the reliability in, uh, analysis and here's what we are doing in at the universal equine we what is called 
performance-based design approach, we can serve various source uncertainty. The variability of the, each parameter is well considered by model them as random variables. We have the mean variance probability distribution to model the uncertainty of each parameter. And the desired criterion, the desired criterion are defined in terms of the displacement of the foundation. And in reliability analysis, we use Monte Carlo simulation. We have regular MCS method or an important sampling method to calculate the failure probability. And in this section, I will talk more about the, the component of each component of the research method. First, let's talk about random fields. Random field is used to model the uncertainty of soil properties. We need three parameters uh, to model four parameters. One is distribution type, second is the mean value, third is variance, and finally we have a correlation function. The correlation function is used to, um, to describe how the soil properties are correlating in space. The first, the first three parameters are used to kept to model a random variable and the, the correlation function is needed when you're trying to describe a random field. And this is an example of random field. This is a Markovian correlation function, one dimensional. And let's take a look at the realization of 1D random field here. Correlation length is this parameter, theta. Is this one? See, look at these. Look at the two realizational random field. They have the same mean, same variance, but they different theta. And from the figure, we can see that if the theta is becomes larger, the random field becomes more flat. That is the bottom. The random field in the bottom half. And to generate random field. We use a local average use of division method, which is a very fast and accurate method. And we can use other methods too. They call fast Fourier transform or covariance matrix decomposition. But we use uh, LAS, local averaging subdivision method. As we talk about, we have, and in the design process, we have model errors. When you model the soil behavior and uh, concrete behavior and steel behavior, we use PY curves, TC curves, and QW curves to model the soil behavior, but those curves are empirical and may not truly represent the reality. And when you model this, also we have a stress strain relationship for soil, for concrete, and for steel. And in order to account for the model error, we Use the we introduce a a random variable called the bias factor. Bias factor is over here e. This one is a random number, and in Monte Carlo simulation, it is randomly generated applied to correct your prediction. Design criterion. We for the for the design of lateral loaded pipes, we set up three design criterion. One is called axial movement, and the second is called lateral diffraction, and the third one is, is angle distortion. To calculate the axial displacement, we use the t conventional P PC model. And to calculate the, the diffraction profile and angle distortion, we use the PY method. And let's take a look at the, the design criteria in the performance-based design framework. This is an actual loaded pile. And suppose we have um, conducted a load test, and we can construct the load displacement curve. It looks like, so what, like this one. Suppose we set up the, we have the, we have the design load, and we also have the allowable displacement, like this way. And in this case, and from the from the low displacement curve, if you give me a 
design load and I can easily find out what is the corresponding displacement from from the two comparison we can see that the serviceability limit chart will dominate the design. If the load is bigger, suppose this is the allowable displacement. If you apply a load that is greater than this one, greater than this one, then we can say that the actual displacement will be greater than what is allowable. Failure will occur. And if the displacement, if the design, if the load is this one, then we can say that the vertical movement would be within the allowable displacement. And we have multiple failure modes in the design process. We have structural failure and performance related failure. For structural failure, we have bending, bending moment failure and shear failure. For performance, we have three design criteria. Lateral deflection, vertical movement, and angle distortion. You know, so we need to consider the system reliability. And the first equation is used to calculate the probability of structural failure. The second equation is used to calculate the performance-related failure. That is a union of the three failure events. Same for the system failure, we can use the third equation to calculate. That is the union of the structural failure and performance related failure. In our research, instead of trying to calibrate the resistance factors in LRD framework, we developed some computer based program for, for lateral loaded piles and for extra loaded piles. And also, we have a program that would conserve multiple failure modes called x -pile. And in, all, in this program, we, we still use the TC model and TY method as the basic model to calculate the, the, dis, the displacement of the pile. But in a, to account for the, to accommodate the uncertainties in the design process, we include a reliability tool that we use to calculate the failure probability. And we can still vary the source uncertainty. Let's take a look at the input to the program code. First of all, you have to define what is the variability model of soil properties. Define the variability model of allowable displacement. And you need to define how your external load are variable. And to differentiate live load and dead load, also you need to consider the uncertainty of low transfer curve. And that's different. And what we are doing is different from the LFD. In LFD, you lump all kinds of uncertainty into a, a resistance factor. But here, we separate all the variability and concern differently. Different sources of uncertainty are treated differently. And this is how we accommodate the uncertainties in the design process. That's a different from a LFD approach. In reliability analysis, first of all, you have the widely accepted first order reliability method. And next, you have a Monte Carlo simulation. We use Monte Carlo simulation because First order reliability method may not be accurate depending on what kind of a limit state function you have. And to explain this question, we, it's easy to look at this, this figure. And here we have a concave limit state function and convex function. And this is only a two dimensional case. The first order reliability method will approximate the, the limit state function using the first all the Taylor theory, Taylor expansion. As a result, for concave, for this one, for the concave limit state function, 
the first order reliability method will underestimate the failure probability and for the convex for the convex function because this limit state function is convex towards the origin of the coordinate and for this one it will overestimate the failure probability as a result we use monocolor simulation so how do we, how do we define the failure event and this equation we use to define the failure event g is the limit state function this one is called limit state function and here is the formulation of the failure probability i this fun i is the indicator function here and this is the equation we implement to calculate the failure probability and a convergence plot looks like this one when the number of samples increases the estimate would converge this estimate would converge to an unbiased estimate of the failure probability but the, the, the disadvantage is that it is computationally demanding it is low in convergence you need a very large sample size let's take a look at a simple equation over here this is a limit state function we have x1 x2 as a random variable both of them follow standard normal distribution and we need to calculate what is the probability what is the failure probability here using monocolor simulation and before we have monocolor solution we can use form to calculate what is the failure probability and here's the equation here's the solution this beta is the reliability index based on the beta we can easily calculate the failure probability and get a design point this one is a design point now when you use monocolor simulation you need a very large sample size this in this figure the sample size is 10,000 but let's look take a look at the points that falls into the failure domain the thick solid line is the limit state function g this line and this part is the failure domain and the right hand side is the safe domain we count the number of points there's only three the conclusion is that when you use the regular monocolor simulation you need a very large sample size to get a converged estimate that would slow down your calculation and in order to address the computational efficiency we implement more important sampling techniques instead of drawing samples from the original probability distribution we draw samples from an instrumental function and here is the instrumental function over here x hx and the estimate will look like this way this is the important sampling quotient now instead of drawing samples from the origin of the sample from the origin from the original probability distribution we draw samples from a different probability distribution now here we only use a, a sample size of a thousand and we can get we can estimate a very small failure probability over here the dash line is the exact solution this is what we this is the solution we get from important sampling you see they are almost the, almost the same and the failure probability is very small but we only use a sample size of thousand that's the sample size we use in reliability based design 
for geotechnical engineering, the soil properties are very critical. So we need to define and determine the soil variability model in the dis in reliability based design. In other words, we need to calculate three parameters. And in the beginning, we talk about that we model the soil properties as random fields. We use the mean value uh, variance and correlation length theta over here to describe that theta is called correlation length. We use the three parameters to mathematically describe a random field. And the problem, the question is, how can we determine the three parameters? We use a Bayesian approach and Markov chain monocolor simulation to determine the three parameters that is used as input to the computer code. Now, in conventional, in stand SPT test, we have three blown counts. We only use the second and the third blown count to get the blown count n value, then convert, then correct the n value to account for the energy efficiency. And then we use some empirical correlation to estimate the soil properties. The first one is for cohesion. The second one is is for effective friction angle. And before we calibrate the three descriptors of the random field, we have to make some assumptions. Assumption number one, each n value is considered a unit in the basin approach. Number two, the mean standard deviation and correlation length do not change in this unit. And third, soil properties are log normal distributed. We have three assumptions. And here's the approach we take a basin approach. Lambda is a parameter vector. X is a, we have soil properties from the standard penetration test. And then we're taking logarithm as X, the capital X. And then we have a normalizing constant. This part is called likelihood function. It's used to describe what's the probability of what's the probability of occurrence of observing the data we have. F prime lambda and and this one is uh, the prior or posterior PDF. Observational data. Now we have to invoke assumption number one. We have three uh, we have three broad count. We only use second and the third broad count to estimate the soil property. And here I define an equivalent N60 here. It's N60 prime. And then we use the N prime 60 to evaluate the corresponding soil properties. Likelihood function. Now, in order to establish the likelihood function, we need to invoke assumption number one, number two, and number three. And here, because they follow log normal distribution, we can use a bivariate normal PDF to construct the log normal function. And in this equation, there's a matrix called R. R is defined in this equation. Rho is the correlation coefficient. OK, here is the procedure, the computational procedure we adopted to calculate the three parameters. First of all, you have SPT data, and you have the, the second broad count and the third broad count in each unit, and use the two broad counts to evaluate the equivalent N60 N60 prime, then you calculate the strength parameter of soil properties of soil. Then can, you will get the observational data, capital X. And then you use the, you can plug in the likelihood function. You can, in the next step, you can make assumption on what is the prior PDF of the parameter vector. Then you can get parameter of interest. The advantage is that we don't need to pay attention to the normalizing <coughs> And then we use MC, Markov chain monocolor, that's called MCMC. We use MCMC to draw samples of the parameters of interest. 
and then we use the samples to conduct statistical analysis, and you will get the parameters of interest over here. That's the product, final product. Now let's take a, and in the boring, in the remaining part of this presentation, I will give you some examples. The first one is called, is lateral loaded pile. And this example is taken from, uh, from user manual of Federal Highway Administration. Here's the pile. It's subjected to lateral load. The shear, the horizontal shear is 25 kips. The moment, the moment is 500 kips per foot, and the allowable displacement, allowable diffraction is half an inch, and here's the PY curve that's used in the calculation. Shear is 25 kips, moment is 500 kips per foot, and the original design is 4 feet in diameter and 20 feet in length. The section would be reinforced by 12 number 11 bars with cover thickness of 3 inches. Now let's do a parametric study using the design and the soil properties. And in order to construct the PY curve, we use we have three soil properties, SU, epsilon 50, and gamma prime, that's called unit weight. And in the report, they only give you a determinism value for the soil property. And I suppose those are the mean value. But they, and I also provide coefficient of variation on this column to describe the uncertainty of the soil properties. And in additionally, we have the correlation length. Remember, we model the soil properties as random fields. So we need the correlation length, correlation function to describe the correlation structure. And here's the conversion. SU is about 15 PSI. Unit weight is about 0.07 PCI. And let's fix the correlation length for epsilon 50 and gamma prime as one meter, but we vary the we vary theta for SU and we can draw a lot of samples. And the theta of SU is very is very from 0 0.1 meter, 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 0 0.1 uh, meter, 2 meter, 8 meter, 32 meter, and 60 meter. The theta are varied and the resulting samples are also different. You can look at the probability distribution of all these. They have the mean and the where and the standard deviation of the samples of the left lateral diffraction are different because the theta is different. We end up with different failure probability. The lowest one, two meter, eight meter, thirty-two meter, sixty-four meter, and the final probability of failure are different. They are clearly different, noticeable, very obvious. And let's do another parametric study. In this study, the COV of the SU cohesion and the correlation length theta of SU are vary. They vary from from zero to infinity, and the COV vary from 10% to about 100%. We look at the failure probability. You see that depending on the COV and theta, the failure probability are different. As a result, in reliability calculation, we need to consider the two parameters. Otherwise, your calculation won't be accurate. And that is the implication, the interpretation of the theta. When theta is longer, this one is longer, and the random field looks more flat. But, and this is a very important parameter in reliability calculation for foundation design. 
example two, let's take a look at. Uh, can I can I ask you to go back a few slides? You don't mind. Okay. Uh, uh, the slides where you show the graph for the as you. <coughs> yeah, this graph. Where did you get this distribution? Which distribution? The distribution, the log normal, the data distribution that you're showing on the graph. Oh, you. Where, 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 is, where is the data? Where is the data coming? From? The data coming from? They are artificial data. It's artificial data. We use Monte Carlo simulation, but. Uh, uh, let's, first of all, let's look at it here. <coughs> we have soil properties. The soil properties are random. They are uncertain. They are modeled as random fields. And we have the mean value, main value, and COV. And in addition to the two parameters, we include a third parameter called theta. We use all these parameters as an input to the computer program we develop and then calculate the lateral diffraction, when we can get a large number of lateral diffraction in this way. Okay. The horizontal axis, the horizontal axis of all these figures are the lateral diffraction at the top of the pile. Just this one, the lateral diffraction. But you can see that the probability distribution are varied, the mean are varied. Are different and the standard deviation are also different significantly and as a result we end up different failure probability because of the soil model this is example is a, an actual loaded pile and we have specified a few parameters the actual load is uh, 1300 kilonewton. The allowable displacement about one inch, 25 millimeter. And here's the diameter we have. It's also in clay. The average SU is about 100 kilopascal. Log normal distributed COV is 20%. Theta here is only one meter. And for this design, when you use the crude model color simulation, you end up this figure. The problem is that it's okay. Um, the results are okay, and the problem is that the sample size is very large. It's 300,000 samples. You can estimate this probability. It's about one over a thousand. You can achieve a COV for this parameter. It's five percent. But you can implement an important sampling. You can substantially reduce the sample size to a thousand. See here, there's only a thousand samples, but we can get very close result. The results are very close. And here, this is the result is for first order reliability method. They are all very close. The problem is this one is that sample size is too big. And finally, let's take a look at the real world project. The project, in this example, I would talk about the general description and use of MCMC to determine the three parameters of a soil random field, and then use clicking to estimate unknown parameters. Finally, I would uh, conduct reliability analysis and finalize the design. And here is the we are at. It's in Ohio. And this is a sub what we found from subsurface investigation. They have a top from 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 the top to the bottom we have top soil, seal clay, seal and clay. Very stiff brown and grain clay and silty clay. Juicer design. We specify the tolerable displacement, one inch for lateral diffraction and one inch for vertical movement. The actual load is determined in this about, uh, I forgot to put the English unit, uh, English 
convergent here. And here we have two SPD data at boring log. Here we do the swap and we have two boring log over here, one here. That's the SPT data. And we use MCMC to calculate mu, uh, sigma, and theta. And we can estimate, and this is some result. Here are three um, um, empirical CDF for the parameters. The dashed line are the prior CDF. The story line is for posterior PD, uh, CDF. And in this way, we can, for one flow count, for one flow count n value, we can determine what is the mu and what is the sigma, mu and sigma. Because we assume that the soil properties follow normal distribution, and here, mu sigma are for the normal, normal distribution, and then we can convert to the normal distribution in this way. We can determine what is the mean value the mean value, mean value, and standard deviation. And accordingly, we can determine theta in this way. And for another n value, we can do the same thing. And we can, then we can determine all the soil properties, correlation length. And here is the empirical CDF cumulative distribution function. We have cohesive soil in the, in the side, and we also have granular soil. And here is the probability distribution of the theta. Uh, sample size, the maximum value is about 0.75 meter. The minimum value is about a, foot, a feet, about 0.3 meter. The, the mean of the theta is about 0.44. And for granular soil, we have very similar results. The minimum value is about one feet, and the maximum is 0.77 meter. The mean is about 0.51 meter. And here's the result for theta. Because the user is constructed in a position that is away from the boring log, we need to estimate the soil the soil profile in this location. But in in SPT, we only have two boring logs over here. And from the discussion before, we can determine the soil variability model mu, sigma, and theta for BR1 and BR2. And we use the information over BR1 and BR2 to estimate what's going on under the ground at the construction at this point. Here, I will introduce the cooking technique. That is a geostatistical method. And as long as you provide me the distance, here, L is the distance. We have a few observations. We have M observations. We have M observations. As long as you provide me the, the distance between your observation be, between your observation and your and the interesting location, then I can calculate what is the relative weight for each observation, and then your estimate would be the weighted average of your observation. The granular soil and cohesive soil, and we identify the thickness of each soil layer, and accordingly we can apply cooking technique to estimate the interesting location, that is where the juicer is constructed. We can easily calculate what is the thickness of each layer. Remember here, we identified the soil certification at BR1 and BR2, and we use the information over BR1 and BR2 to, have a, to interpret what is the soil certification at this point. And here the result we have. And we can repeat the same computational procedure to get the soil profile at the 
at the construction point here is the is the interpreted soil profile. There is the elevation. Here is the soil property. It can be friction angle or cohesion. And here's the mean value. And we use the cooking technique to estimate the corresponding the corresponding uh, standard deviation and theta over here. For each layer, we can do the same calculation from number one to number number A. There's A layers in the construction site. And then we can conduct reliability analysis using this input. OK, we consider all the uncertainties are separated and treated differently based on the degree of variation. And in order to use the program, you need to specify the mean value. You have to specify the mean value and the COV for the concrete compression, the use of reinforcement, elastic modulus, etc. And you pick these values up <coughs> You know, ATI and uh, yes. are you getting these values from the mean and the COV values for, let's say, FC prime? For FC prime, we pick, I pick this value from ACI, yes. But it depends on the quality control of your concrete. If your construction quality is very good, the COV is, can be as low as 3% or 2%. But your construction quality is poor, then your COV can be as much as 10%. 15 percent. But for this analysis, that the example that you have sent, you are saying you are using these values. Yes. For the result over here, I use the values summarized in this table. I was wondering where did you get the coefficient of variation for um, for your F sub U value and your unit. Active unit weight values. I, I don't know where did you get these distributions and their means and the coefficient variation. And for the example, we don't have the, we cannot find any statistical result for the epsilon 50 or, but we can find the result for unit weight or cohesion. They are available from other people's research, like KK Form. They compiled a lot of data and published the result in 1999. Okay, so you are basically saying that the values that you're using was picked up from other research. Yes, some of the results are picked up from some other research. The log normal distribution, the coefficient of variation, right. and the mean values you got from somewhere else. Yes. Other publications. Other publications, yes. Okay, I just want to I just want to make sure that everybody understands that that's the case. I have a question is uh, if this drill shaft is uh, reached to a rock, stuck in into the rock, is that a Soil parameter is pretty big deal for the gel shaft failure uh, behavior. It will, it will be different because this looks like a, it just clay uh, a different uh, granular or different soil property. But uh, if uh, really, when usually the gel shaft uh, will be a lot of cases, they, they suck in the rock. It's just a horse, yeah. Yeah, when we do the rock shock edition, we have that uh, value. Yeah. Uh, this is Robert. Robert Leon, can I jump in here? Oh, sure. Yeah, I think the question is about the, uh, the drill shaft socket into rock. But of course, uh, uh, for the lateral behavior, the top top soil, overburden soil, still controls the lateral diffraction. It's not, uh, you know, the, the you know the, for the location of the uh, rock that you encountered. Of course, if it's near the ground surface, it controls your lateral diffraction. But if you have a, you know. Uh, uh, thick overburden soils and the top, uh, you know, five diameter of the uh, drill shaft uh, depths will control the lateral diffraction of the drill shaft. So we still have to model the entire stratification 
uh, and run the uh, l pile type of analysis to look at the diffraction of the drill shaft. Uh, so it's not, you know, the soil not be, not important, but it still controls to some extent the natural behavior, particularly the diffraction of the drill shaft. I don't know that that give you a little bit of uh, uh, answer about the question. I think a, a person uh, was asking about the suck it into the rock. Okay, so you said uh, if inside the rock will be uh, uh, use use the L pile program analysis will be more suitable for this analysis. But this new model uh, introduced uh, just for regular like uh, uh, the drill shaft stuff by top of rock is like in the in the soil depend on the soil. No, actually, our program can incorporate a PY curves for rock as well. It's just uh, very, in this example, we do not have an example showing it stuck in the rock. PY curves representing different type of uh, soil strata, including if you have a bad rock, then you input that in. Then you can do a complete analysis in terms of uh, uh, drill shaft performance. Uh, so, so, so what I'm saying is that uh, our program analysis is just a probability-based L pile analysis as far as the uh, lateral loaded piles is concerned. Thank you. Okay. Okay, I, I'll mute. I'll mute myself again. <laughs> Okay. And this table summarizes the input to the program. The first three are related to uh, concrete or steel. The second three, uh, the three E P Y E T C and E Q W, are the model model error for the P Y curve, T C curve, and Q W curve. And for the D here, we have three parameters. D delta, D W, and D E phi. They are for they are allowable allowable displacement for lateral diffraction, vertical movement, and angle distortion. And we and we also have the load over here. But there's another part that it didn't show up at the bottom here. They are the external load. V is for shear, but we also have axial load that is didn't show up in this didn't show up in the in the slide, and we also we specify the mean value and COV. We take in the typical value and conduct a reliability analysis. And here is the old design. The old design is that diameter is 42 inches, length is 83 feet, will be reinforced by 12 number 11 bars. Cover thin is 3 inches, and the reliability analysis that it says that if you use the design, you will end up with this failure probability is about three over a thousand. That it depends on what is your target target reliability. It may be satisfactory. If program to read to read uh, read can calculate the results. We use the program and do our own design. And here's our new design. We still use 42 inches, and but we cut the length of the pile to only 50 feet. And these are drill cut the length of the drill strap. And we use um, 22 number 11 bars. We still use the same uh, cover techniques. And here is what our result is. If you target at the uh, failure probability at 1 over 1,000, then you will end up then we can conclude that out the design is satisfactory, and is even, and we can get even lower failure probability. And the second thing we would like to talk about is that the PF is only is for the failure probability of the system. The this PF plus a W is for the failure probability of vertical movement, and the the third one, the failure probability of Lateral diffraction is this one. We can see that if you consider the system reliability, your your global 
your global failure probability would be a little bit higher than the individual limit state. We have we have two limit states, angle distortion and um, lateral deflection and vertical movement. We have two limit states. These are the two limit states, and as a result, we have the global failure uh, failure probability. The failure, uh, the failure probability of the system is greater than any of the individual failure modes. So, but in the current practice, we didn't consider the multiple failure modes simultaneously. All the limit states are considered separately. So there's a poten there's a potential that we would we would underestimate the probability of failure. As a result, that would end up unconservative design. There's a this uh potential. And we can we also calculate the factor of safety. The old design is a 5.2, but we end up we have a new design. It's 3.3 .3 only. From this standpoint, we may say that the old design might be over conservative. That's the design we have. We have a smaller factor of safety, but to turn out the failure probability is higher than the old design. And here we develop some computer program, and this is only one of the one of them. There's a few, and this is how it looks like. We all this program is used for the pile under combined axial loading and lateral load. We use the same method. We use the PY method and TC model to calculate the diffraction and angle, ang diffraction, lateral diffraction, angle distortion, and uh, vertical movement. And here is some uh, screenshot of the program. We need you specify the set the demo size in monocolor simulation. And in the next tab you need to input the soil properties over here. That is the elevation. The first column is elevation. That is, second one is soil type. One is would be correspond to a predefined Soil type like soft clay or steep clay, above water or under water, sand or some other or weak rock or strong rock. Soil type. Okay, here is a soil strength parameter C, V or Q, U, and this is another P Y modulus or E I, the effective unit weight epsilon 50, and some other parameters if they are needed. And here we also input. There's another table. You need to provide what is the standard deviation of the soil property. That's standard deviation in this column. And uh, there's another column over here. You need to input what is the theta over here. On the next step is the your design. That is a pile configuration. You need to specify the pile diameter, pile length, number of longitudinal bars. And the diameter of the longitudinal bus. This one is number 11. The number put here is number 11. And cover thickness. Diameter of the transverse V bus. Spacing of transverse V bus. Okay. That is our design for the. And here we have a tab for the load. We differentiate live component and depth component. Depth component of the live load. Same here. We also do the same thing for the lateral load. That's for shear. That's for actual load, and this is low eccentricity. The the lateral load multiplied by the low eccentricity, you will get the bending moment at the top of the pile. And here you need to specify the probability distribution of the load for live load and dead load. Same here. In addition, you need to specify the mean value of the load, the COV coefficient of variation for the load accordingly. Okay. And here we have the model error for PY curves, TC curves, and QW curves. And in this analysis, because we don't have the we don't conduct load test, we don't have the data. And the data you see here is only for for demonstration. They are artificial data. You for all for all these random variables, you need to provide the probability distribution, log normal, gamble, gamma, exponential, etc. And in addition, you need to provide 
mean value and you specify the COV. And in the next step, you need to provide the probability distribution for the materials. That's for the FC prime, the compressive strength of concrete, the U strength of reinforcement, the elastic modulus of the reinforcement. And this one is for the transverse reinforcement. It's similar to the second one. So I I input the same value over the, this table. And here you need to specify the allowable displacement. Remember we specify three design criterion. One is lateral deflection, one is angular distortion, and one is vertical movement. And you need to specify the probability distribution, mean value, and also you need to specify coefficient of variation. And here there is a graph. After you input all these parameters, you can hit this button and analyze. Then you will start and start the computation. And here this figure is different from the one we we have. If uh, we have lateral deflection, angle distortion, vertical movement, vertical movement, moment failure, shear failure, structural failure, and system failure, you see here. You have to pay attention here. Over here. The system failure probability is the, the largest among all the failure probabilities because the system failure is a union all of all the individual limit states. So, so in the design, we have to consider in consider the system failure, but in the practice, we didn't consider that there's something that we can improve. And what, once the report uh, once the calculation is completed, once it's completed, it takes 26 seconds. Once it's completed, and a report will be generated. And that is the program we developed for the for design of pile under actual loading and lateral load. And we okay. I would like to conclude the presentation and we develop the performance based design for piles under extra loading and lateral load and soil properties are modeled as random fields. We need three parameters more we need three parameters to model the uncertainty. One is mean value, standard deviation and theta. And we found that the failure probability is very sensitive to theta. That's the correlation length and say and we develop a few computer programs for reliability calculation in the D foundation design. And we recommend that system reliability should be considered if there's a multiple mode of failure. And we also have some rec recommendations for future research. The first one is to, is what we are doing, we still are doing, and we have making some uh, pro progress. The first one is develop a reliability tool for pi group. The usually users are constructed in a pi group instead of single pile. And the program we use are group developed by NSoft or FE Pi Peer from from Florida. But those programs are deterministic and we can do something to in, to analyze the probability distribution of the allowable of the allowable this replacement over here, and this is the limit state function. Et is the tolerable displacement. D is the, the the random displacement that would. This one is dependent on the soil property and depending on your structure, and this one is your design criterion. But this one, we don't have uh, enough data. We all we have is uh, empirical. We all often specify them the allowable. Settlement is one inch or half an inch. The allowable lateral deflection is one inch or half an inch, something like this one. And we also need to develop the guidelines for, to determining the variability of external load. The load are very critical in reliability analysis. It's very sensitive. It's more important than the soil property. 
Finally, we need to calibrate the model error. Model error is critical in reliability analysis. We are, if you use the predefined PY criterion or TC criterion, you may overestimate or underestimate, but we don't know. Because the soil behavior is so complicated, you cannot use the predefined. You, if you use the predefined criterion, you may end up with a huge error. So, any questions? Unmute your phone and say them out loud. Have any questions from the room? Okay, I would like to let you know that this presentation has been recorded. It will be available on the research website. If you would like to have a copy of the PowerPoint and you are uh, participating online, you can actually download it right now. It is uh, over to the side of your screen. You will see a box that says Files 2. The file you want to download is the one called Final DSLL. That's the presentation that Dr. Fan just walked you through. Uh, the other one has the slides a little bit out of order. Um, the final report is also being published. It will be available on the research website. We will put the web link in the chat box so that you can see it. And if there are no questions, we thank everyone for participating. And you are free to uh, go ahead and sign off. Um, I do see there are some questions that are starting to come in. Um, Thank you. We'll hang on for those of you who might be typing some. The system that you've developed, that somewhat model, are you using that for other things than this project? You mean the application? Yes. The computer program. The computer program, yes. So we saw in the last example, we used the program in the last example. That's a real example. And it end up we cut down the length of the pile from 83 feet to 55 feet. There's a huge amount of money saving, I think. I think she means have you used the methodology for different applications? Uh, for which application? Of, like, for instance, uh, spread footing or... Uh, no, we haven't gone... Or something. Yes, we can do that. And from the standpoint of computation, e-foundation is more complicated than spread footing. You, we can all, we can definitely we can extend our research to both areas. The other research project. Uh, I don't know what the other student is under Liang and another similar application. Seminar. I need to go home. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'd like to thank you all for participating. We're going to go ahead and officially conclude the seminar. If you have any questions, go ahead and email those to research at dot state dot Thank you for your participation.